Hey Bass Geek here, and this may be the best rig I've ever used to pick apart individual targets. All right, geeks, that's right. This rig is incredible for spending a lot of time in and around a single target. And that's really how I use it. So I find some sort of target, whether it be structure, whether it be cover, whether it be, you know, brush, or whether it be a stump, or whether it be a big rock, or whether it be a dock, uh, anything that you can imagine, this rig is great about giving some incredible action while at the same time staying in the exact same location. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the free rig, guys. Now, I know you've heard a lot about the free rig. This is kind of the mag free rig. I'm gonna show you some underwater footage of it too, just kind of how it works, but I'm gonna give you all the information on the setup and explain to you exactly how this thing works. First, I wanna show you some cool baits that I like to use on the free rig. Now, you can use pretty much anything, and by the end of this video, you'll kind of understand why I use specific plastics, specific line, and you know specific weights. And it really depends on how deep you are. Now we're gonna be fishing out a little bit deep so you can adjust based on how deep you are. But you always wanna go a little heavier than usual. We'll talk about that in a minute, check it out. So these are Nico baits, guys, check these out. Now, these colors are a little bit wild on these. These things are great. Let me tell you, you can use them as trailers for a Texas rig. The weight will fit right up in the head. You can do so much stuff with these things and they look great on a free rig, let me tell you. But I'm gonna show you something a little bit different because like I said, these colors are a little bit crazy. We're gonna talk more and use more of these a little bit later. I do wanna show you some of the stuff that they sent me. Check these out. We're gonna talk about these a little bit later too. You wanna to talk about a drop shot machine. These little baits right here, these are the Akinago baits. I hope I'm saying that right. You know, got a couple of different colors on that. I just wanna kind of run through these, but here is what I love. And this is my favorite color. This is the Zaza Worm, six inch. This is Mud Bug, okay? So it's this color right here. Now notice, so you know what that means, it floats, right? This is a very durable plastic. What's great about this, I mean, number one, look at the tail, look at the bait, is that on the free rig, because you've got a polished ring. Now I know a lot of you are gonna be, oh, can't you do the same thing with a Texas rig weight, uh, you know, a bullet weight? It doesn't work nearly as well. If you don't believe me, put it underwater. I've tested it, I know. This allows the line to slide through smoothly and especially on the drop where it's key. Now you'll notice this is a three quarters ounce angler tungsten. Okay, they make them in all different sizes. We're gonna be doing a mag free weight rig that I like to use out deep during the summer. All right, guys, so this is pretty much all you need. We'll talk about rod reel line in a minute, but the big key, like I said, is that little polished stainless steel loop. And uh, like I said, Angler Tungsten, there is a discount down in the description. Uh, this is just a Gamakatsu offset shank worm hook. Oh, wait, look at me, I about messed up. You just slide the line through and you just let it slide free. From there, you just tie whatever knot it is that you like to tie. That's what it's gonna look like. And this is what it'll look like with worm. Something that I love that Nico does, by the way. Look, check it out, there's a little hole in there. Because I don't know if you guys have ever rigged any sort of a Laztec worm. See the little slot right there? They can be a little bit of a pain, but they are exceptionally durable. So you pull it up there, I always like to try and pull it up over my line. And then of course, you know, you've got a slot, you got a little hole here. So one thing about these is you wanna make sure that you kinda look where it's gonna go in, where it's gonna come out 
come out at a slight angle. And I like mine to be slightly exposed. That way, you know, you get a good hook set on these things. Because this stuff is tough, as you can see. Most of the time, I'll take expose it good and straight. Now, let's talk about rod reel and line setup. All right, let's talk about rod reel and line setup, guys. I'll get to line, but I'm telling you, line is super important on this setup. And I want to talk to you a little bit more extensively on that. Now, one thing I will tell you, I've got a three alt hook in here. I would highly suggest a four or even five on these worms. Four is probably just about right. This is, again, the high-end TFO Resolve Bass. This is my worm rod. This is my heavy cover worm rod with a seven foot three medium heavy fast action. I can throw up to an ounce on this bad boy. And it is super sensitive. And sensitivity on anything that you're moving on the bottom and anything, especially this time of year, that you are gonna get those very light bites from those big bass, it is key to have super sensitivity, okay? On my worm rods, I like a higher speed. This is an eight three to one. This is a lose. I think it's one of the KVDs. Uh, I believe it's an eight three to one anyway. No, I'm lying. It's a nine five to one. So super fast. Let's talk about line. This is canine, but this is canine's fluoro. And by fluoro, that is not fluorocarbon. Pro 100 is their fluorocarbon, 100% fluorocarbon. Let me show you. This fluoro is their copolymer. And yes, 14 pound test is what I like to use. Uh, guys, listen, this is great line. I use this now for spinnerbaits, chatterbaits, spy baits, uh, pretty much anything that moves horizontally and this rig, the free rig. And the reason why I like this is because it is neutrally buoyant. It's got a little bit of stretch, just a tiny bit more stretch than 100% fluorocarbon, but it's still invisible and it doesn't take on water like mono. Mono is just way, way too soft and stretchy for me for this rig. So I like the canine fluoro, guys. I'm telling you, you need to check this out. This is a great co-poly style. And, and I know you can't see it because I've kind of screwed up the bottom there, but it is a really great diameter. Go check them out. There is a discount, uh, which should be popping up right here. All right, now let's go and let me show you what this looks like in the water now listen guys i'm fishing deeper the deeper you fish the heavier the weight the shallower you fish the lighter the weight but i'm going to tell you this i'm going to prerequisite it with this you want this bait to hold still this is a bait where if i see a stump out here or i see a rock i want it to sit there and i want to move that worm up and down i don't want it coming to me i don't want to hop it I want that worm to sit right there going up and down in that bass's face, okay? Now you can see we got a few bass out here on a ledge. Now, the biggest reason I want a heavier weight like this angler tungsten heavy free rig weight is because it will fall so much faster than this. So by the time it gets down, this will be way up high. So when I pull it down that first time, it's gonna have a very long, slow descent. It's gonna sit there and I'm gonna let it sit there and soak floating up for a few minutes. I don't wanna move it. Remember this, where I think this rig shines is when you're fishing a certain spot this big around and you're hitting all four corners of it. So, let me show you what this thing looks like and let me show you how to fish it. All right, we're gonna talk about the retrieve and the retrieve really isn't a retrieve. Okay, I've got some bass that I see here. They're quite a ways out there. They're about 80 or 90 feet. So they're a little bit far off of us, but we can make that cast from here. And what's gonna happen is, is I'm gonna make that cast. 
and I'm gonna feed that line. I want that to fall as free as it can, okay? Now it's sitting there. This is where you have to become a line watcher because it's sitting there. So I'm gonna reel up, but I'm, I'm trying my best not to move that worm that much. And a lot of times you can shake, shake that slack and it'll just make that worm wiggle. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna reel down to about nine o'clock and I'm gonna lift up until I feel that weight. And then I'm gonna shake this just a little bit. And I'm gonna reel down to where I feel it. And I'm not moving it. I'm just bouncing it off and giving it some line. And that's what I'm doing. I'm leaving it in, in spots and then I'm lifting. Trust me, that free weight, you will feel them eat that worm. If it's a big piece of structure, you can hop it, you can drag it. I suggest hopping it. I would almost never drag this rig. So again, just make a cast to the spot that you want to die, dissect. And a lot of times, again, I'm just gonna let it sit there. I might even shake that slack. I'm gonna lift, pop it. So it's popping that weight, okay? Popping that weight. And then, you know, I'm gonna shake that slack a little bit, get that bait to come up. Most of the time, the best way to get that bait to float, and you've seen it in the underwater footage, is to lift and pop it. But that really is the retrieve, guys. Cast it out there, let it sit, feed it line so it falls straight down, and it gets distance between the weight and the bait, okay? Then pull it down, pull it down. You know, I'm not saying snap or jerk, but pull it down to where you feel it go boom on the bottom. A lot of times once it hits that ring, it'll float right back up. And that is a lot of times when you're gonna get your bites, when it backs up. First off guys, make sure you go check out Nico Baits, man. They've got a ton of stuff, a great Helgramite, uh, a ton of great, great baits that are super, super durable, uh, very high-end baits from Japan. You need to give this free rig a try. You really need to give it a try. You can use it in shallower water on a spinning rod. You know, we're just using a magnum sort of setup here today because we're fishing deeper water. I'm telling you, it is an incredible, incredible setup. And uh, like I said, it's probably one of the best rigs to pick apart a spot that I've ever seen. All right. Questions, comments in the comment section below. You guys know I love to talk about fishing with you. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you guys ring that bell. 100% Watch Squad, man. Love you guys. You geeks make the world go round. I appreciate you. And as always, you geeks rock.